Right, so this video is about phenol. We're going to look at the physical properties of phenol, uh, the reactions of phenol, and compare with um, compare with benzene. Okay, so first let's take phenol. So phenol is when you've got a benzene ring and you have a hydroxyl group attached to the benzene ring. Okay, so if you write uh, the um, uh, C6H5, because remember that there is one hydrogen on each of the carbons here, because each of the carbons can only form um, one further bond. C6H5OH. Okay, so what we've written there is a called a structural formula. A structural formula. If you are asked to write a molecular formula, this is a really common mistake. Remember with molecular formulae that uh, you have to put it as a list. So molecular formula, it would be C6H6O. Yeah, so six carbons, six hydrogens, one oxygen. And that's molecular formula. Okay, so the first question is what is the physical state? What is the physical state of phenol? Is phenol a solid? Is phenol a liquid? Or is phenol a gas at room temperature? Okay, so first question. So um, uh, phenol is a solid. Okay, and it's actually uh, quite a corrosive solid as well. So you've just got to be handled very carefully in the lab. Yeah, now is this unusual, the fact that it's a solid? Well, let's compare it with benzene. So if you take benzene, okay, the um, melting point of benzene is six degrees. Okay, which means that at room temperature, at room temperature, benzene is going to be which physical state? It's going to be a liquid. Okay, whereas if you take phenol, so the benzene ring with an OH, it doesn't matter which um, which carbon uh, that you put the uh, OH on. Um, its melting point is 43 degrees. Yeah. Um, can I just quickly mention though, what is important is when you're drawing phenol, so actually what is important is about connectivity. So it doesn't matter which carbon you put it on, but you've got to make sure that the bond goes to the O and then there's a bond to the H, yeah? If you wrote something like this, okay, then you would not get the mark. Okay, so you'd lose a mark for connect connectivity, and this one is correct, okay? So that is important, okay? All right, sorry, back to the melting point. So the melting point of phenol is um, 63, uh, sorry, pardon me, 43 degrees. So therefore, at room temperature, uh, phenol is a solid. Okay, so what's quite important is why. Can you explain why? So when you're thinking about melting points and why there's a difference in melting points, you have to consider the intermolecular forces. The intermolecular, oh, I'm going to run out of room, molecular forces. Intermolecular forces. Okay, so that's the forces between the molecules. And if you think about the forces between benzene rings, because remember that's what you want to, when you melt something, when you boil something, you want to break the intermolecular forces. When you think about the intermolecular forces between benzene molecules with carbons and hydrogens, then you are talking about London forces. Or the other name for London forces is induced dipole to dipole forces, okay, which are the weakest intermolecular force. But when you're thinking about the intermolecular forces between phenol molecules, do you know what type of force you have? Because of the oxygen bonded to a hydrogen, you've got hydrogen bonds, which are the strongest intermolecular force. Okay, hydrogen bonds. So you need to be able to um, draw the hydrogen bonding between phenol molecules. So if you've been asked in an exam question, to draw the hydrogen bond between phenol molecules. Make sure and draw your phenol molecule just nice and clearly. Okay, remember with hydrogen bonding, you need the hydrogen bond 
um, comes from the lone pair on the oxygen to the hydrogen of another molecule. And I'm going to label it so we can see very clear it's called a hydrogen bond. Okay, you also need, there actually, I know there's two lone pairs on the oxygen, um, you also need your dipole. So oxygen is electronegative, uh, so that's negative, and the hydrogen is positive. Okay, and that's how you show the hydrogen bond between the phenyl molecules, and that's why it has a higher melting point than benzene. Okay, right, so that's the first point. Okay, the next question then about phenol. So is phenol soluble in water? Is phenol soluble in water? And can you explain? Is phenol soluble in water? Okay, so again, let's think about this. So let's draw phenol. And we've got phenol, yeah? So is it soluble in water? Well, this part of the molecule is soluble in water. Yeah, because this part of the molecule can hydrogen bond, hydrogen bond with the water molecules. Yeah, so this part can hydrogen bond. I'm just writing H bond in order to save a little bit of time, but you wouldn't do that in an exam. You'd write hydrogen bond properly. Can hydrogen bond with water molecules. Yeah, so that's soluble. Whereas this part of the molecule has London forces. Okay, so that part of the molecule, just carbon and hydrogen, is not going to be soluble in water. So this part is insoluble in water. So the question, um, is phenol soluble in water? Well, it's partly soluble, partially soluble. So you can say sparingly soluble, um, partially soluble. Uh, you could say sparingly, sparingly, partially soluble because part of the molecule is soluble and part of the molecule is not soluble. Okay, so it's sparingly soluble in water. Okay, next question about phenol. So is phenol acidic? Okay, now this is an important question as well. So quite often they like to compare with alcohols. So let's just have a look at a, an alcohol. So if you take this alcohol here, for example, do you know the name of this alcohol? This is ethanol. And if I ask you the question, is ethanol acidic? Does ethanol react with sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali? Is ethanol acidic? Is there a reaction? No, 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 no. Yeah, alcohols are not acidic. Okay, so alcohols are not acidic. So what about phenol then? Okay, so is phenol acidic? And actually, yes, phenol, phenols are acidic. They're quite weak, they're weak acids, and we'll explain why uh, in a little, uh, little, a little while. But they're weak acids, which means, remember what that means? That means they partially dissociate into ions. Okay, partially dissociate into ions, and you have all done in water, it's all in water. And this ion is called the phenoxide ion. Okay, so that's the difference compared with, um, compared with alcohols. Alcohols are not acidic, whereas uh, phenol is a weak acid, yeah? Um, so if it partially dissociates, therefore, uh, phenol will react with sodium hydroxide. Okay, right, so I'm, I'm taking a long time writing this, so maybe I'm going to start using the uh, structural formula instead. Okay, C6H5OH plus sodium hydroxide. Okay, and that is going to give you C6H5O. Now, um, I always write the um, charge. It's just, a, it's just a habit. You don't have to write the charge but it's something that I do. You don't have to do it. And I always circle the charge because of my handwriting. And, and, and in exams, I want to make it very clear. So I always circle the charge, yeah? So it's a weak acid and an alkali. It's going to make a salt. So this is a salt um, plus the other item. Can you see what the other item is gonna be? The other item is going to be the uh, water. Yeah, plus water. Okay, and this salt would be called sodium, it's called, sorry, it's called sodium phenoxide. 
now this salt is soluble in water yeah it is soluble in water so an acid and an alkali uh, to give a salt soluble in water so if you want to make phenol soluble you can add sodium hydroxide make the salt and then you can add concentrated HCl in order to um, uh, get the phenol back again right something else about phenol then as well so phenol like alcohols alcohols will do this as well uh, phenol will react with sodium metal okay and it forms again it forms the salts and I'm just going to circle the charges um, and it forms hydrogen gas and therefore we just need to balance it so we're going to need two of those and two of those and two of those okay right next question um, uh, does phenol react with bromine okay so let's compare first let's compare with uh, benzene okay so if you say benzene okay if the question said does benzene react with bromine okay um, let's say uh, bromine water even right not not liquid bromine but bromine water you'd say no no that does not happen yeah in order for benzene to react with bromine it needs to be liquid bromine there needs to be a um, halogen carrier like FeBr3 um, in order for uh, benzene to react with bromine whereas if you take um, a phenol now it doesn't again doesn't matter which carbon I put it on okay um, the um, uh, it reacts with bromine water yeah it reacts with bromine water and it doesn't just react with bromine water it goes absolutely crazy yeah so it goes crazy so um, uh, there's already this OH group is on the the benzene ring okay so the OH directs is a 2,4 directing um, group Okay, so the bromine, if we're going to number our positions, that's carbon 1 on the benzene ring, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5, carbon 6. Phenol, uh, the OH, sorry, is a 2,4 directing, so you're going to get bromine on carbon 2, or bromine on carbon uh, 4, and also 6, which is equivalent to 2 um, on the other side, okay? So it goes absolutely crazy, yeah? And uh, forms, it does, and it's with bromine water as well, no catalyst needed, happens at room temperature. At room temperature, sorry, my writing's gone a bit crazy now. Um, and this is called phenol, and it's called two, four, six, because that's where the bromines are. Two, four, six, try, try, bromo okay i've run out of room so i can write it underneath tribromophenol okay that's what it's called um it's not balanced so we're just going to need to balance it yeah i'm going to tidy it up a little bit Oop, tidy up uh, we need to balance it so we uh have lost a hydrogen on each of these carbons so we need three hbr and we need three bromines like this yeah the observation for this reaction, the observation is the bromine decolorizes, yeah? The bromine decolorizes, becomes colorless, decolorizes, and also you get a white precipitate. This product is a white precipitate. So you get a white precipitate as well. Okay, so why is there a difference here? Now, benzene doesn't react simply easily with a bromine because the pi electrons in, ben in benzene, the pi electrons are delocalized. Yeah, so therefore the electrophile, the bromine, the electrophile is not uh, easily polarized and you need a um, catalyst to make that happen. So you can watch the, um, there's a video on reactions of benzene. So why does it happen with phenol then? So why does phenol react with bromine? 
okay? So phenol reacts with bromine because of the lone pair of electrons on the um, oxygen atom. So the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom are delocalized, are shared into the ring, yeah? So why does phenol react? So this is why does phenol react more readily with um, bromine? So the first reason, first point, is the lone pair of electrons, the lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom. That's really important to say oxygen. Okay, if you don't, if you just say lone pair of electrons, you won't get the mark. Lone pair of electrons on the oxygen atom are delocalized, you use the key word, delocalized into the, you can say benzene ring or into the pi ring. You can say either, yeah, into the pi ring. Okay, that's one, one point. The second point is that this, this therefore increases because the pi electrons are shed in, this increases the pi electron density. Yes, yeah, so it's more dense, it's more rich um, in the ring, in the benzene ring, in the pi ring. Pi ring or benzene ring, yeah? And therefore, point three in, a, in a, an exam question, you would say, therefore, therefore, the electrophiles or you could say but bromine, I mean, you don't have to say electrophiles, are more easily, bromine is more easily attracted, more easily attracted. You can say um, more easily polarized, is what you can say, uh, compared, with, um, compared with benzene. Compared with benzene. Whoops, squeeze it in, compared with benzene. Okay, and so um, quite often we say that OH is activating the ring, activates the ring. Okay, there's, there's normally not a mark to say that, that's just what we say, uh, that's just how you remember it. Um, they could ask you as an extension, they could ask you about phenylamine. Okay, and can you see it's the same situation with phenylamine, um, NH2. So um, nitrogen has got a lone pair of electrons um, which can be delocalized into the pi ring, um, increasing the pi electron density, and then the electrophiles are more attracted. So they could talk about phenylamine as an extension, yeah? So when um, phenol reacts, it just reacts a lot more readily, right? So another extension question they could ask you is they could ask you to compare the reaction of benzene uh, the nitration of benzene. Remember the nitration of benzene is concentrated nitric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid, um, also at temperature 50 degrees. But when you have um, phenol, because phenol reacts more readily um, with uh, the electrophile, you, you don't need concentrated, you just use dilute, dilute um, nitric acid. It even happens at room temperature. Yeah, so the nitration, you, there's a mixture because OH is a 2,4 directing group, you might get that product, yeah. You might get, um, what else could you get? You could get that product, 2,4. You could get a multiple substitution as well because it's more reactive, yeah. Phenol is more reactive than benzene. Okay, the final, nearly finished, sorry, so the uh, use of phenol. Okay, now when phenol was first discovered, right, it's used as a antiseptic. It's used as an antiseptic. Uh, or, or a disin, oh, I can't spell this word, disinfectant. Okay, disinfectant, okay. But the problem is it's corrosive. <laughs> so it can burn your skin, yeah? So instead we use derivatives of phenol. So one of the derivatives of phenol, derived from phenol, is this chemical here. So uh, like this, okay? So that is um, two, four, six, 
trichlorophenol. Trichlorophenol. Okay, TCP, which is a, an antiseptic that you can buy um, in the chemist. Okay, thank you.